Good morning again. It's good to be back at the Lord's house today. Last, last day of the month. January has just flown by. I trust it's been a good new year beginning for you. Still a very trying time around us with all the, the COVID and other things, but God's still in control. God's blessing. He's answering prayers. I've seen prayers answered this week. It's just been wonderful. Today, for a little while, I would like to talk with you on a message entitled, Returning to the Place You Met God. Returning to the Place You Met God. And our scripture comes from the book of Genesis, the 35th chapter, verses 1 through 7. <clears throat> and I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. It says, God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. Make an altar there to the God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you and purify yourselves and change your garments. Then let us rise and go up to Bethel so that I may make there an altar to the God who answers me in the day of my distress and has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave to Jacob all the foreign gods that they had, and the rings that were in their ears. Jacob hid them under the Tabereth tree that was near Shechem. And as they journeyed, a terror from God fell upon the cities that were around them, so that they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. And Jacob came to Luz, that is, Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan. He and all the people who were with him. And there he built an altar and called the place El Bethel, because there God had revealed himself to him when he fled from his brother. Let us pray. Father God, we come in thy presence again right now this hour, Lord. Coming as we always do, Lord, with, with humble hearts, because Father, we're no, we know we're so unworthy to call you our Father, except that you've made it possible for us. You made it possible through your precious Son, Jesus, our Savior. Father, that we have become heirs and joint heirs with Him. We have been, become part of the family of God, and we are so thankful for that, Lord. So we are so proud when we can call you our Father. But Lord, as we have come again to, to honor and to praise you this day, we, we just come asking for more blessings as always, Lord, because there is so much sickness around us. Not only this virus, but so many other things, it seems, that uh, are just bothering our community, our world even, Lord. We pray that you, you're just to stay in control, Father. Just have your will and your way in these lives and just touch them in a mighty way. Father, if it's healing, we pray you'll do it just now. But Father, if it's not to be instantaneous, we pray for the doctors and nurses and others who will minister to them, Lord, that you give them wisdom and knowledge to do what needs to be done. For those who may be traveling, Father, we ask for traveling graces and mercy. For the families who are bereaved, Father, we ask for your peace and your comfort upon them. And guard them up, Lord, and strengthen them and bless them in every way. And Father, for our church, we continue to lift it up in, your, in our prayers. Father, we pray that you'll use this church to reach the lost in our community, in our world, in our nation, all over everywhere, Lord, that we can be witnesses to you, that we can tell others what you've done for us. Help us to be the picture of Jesus in our lives, that they can see that we have something they need. And Father, did this open the door that we could witness to them. Father, we do thank you. We do praise you. And Father, we pray these and all of the prayers in the precious name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen and amen. Now, I believe to fully understand the message that, uh, I, that I have for you today, I think we need to go back a little bit just to catch up. Genesis 27, basically, is where we're going. Hopefully you remember the story of Esau in his moment of weakness uh, sold his birthright to Jacob. And then Jacob, through deception with the help of his mother, 
had gone to east up to come to Isaac, excuse me, and received that birthright. Trickery, if you will. Esau finally comes to the realization of what has taken place, what Jacob has done. And now he is irate, if you will. And he makes the statement that he was going to slay his brother Jacob. Now, Rebecca, the mother, heard this. And so she tells Jacob to go to Laban's house until Esau has calmed down. At this point, I believe Jacob was a very scared man. I would have been if I were in that situation. So Jacob begins his journey. He's on his way to Haran. But it's a long travel, so he must stop overnight. And he stopped in a place called Luz. He gathers some stones together and made a pillow. I often wonder how uncomfortable that probably was, stones for a pillow, but nevertheless, he used stones for a pillow. And he goes to sleep. And while he's sleeping, the Lord begins to move in his heart. Darren Jacob has a dream of a ladder reaching from heaven to earth. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on that ladder. In Genesis 28, 13, we read, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offsprings. Now Jacob is, is very moved by this experience. And he took the stone that he had used as a pillar and anointed it, if you, if you will. Anointed that stone as a memorial to God at that point. And he called the place Bethel. That means house of God. Now, as we, we move forward and focus on the experience in Jacob's life, I want us to look at the message for this morning. Returning to the place you met God. You know, I'm afraid that many people are very much like Jacob. Either they have been to the place where they met God and, and have made a, a vow of some kind to Him, if He would help them, with this or, or with that, that they would live for him forever. It's a very easy vow to make, not so easy to keep sometimes. However, troubles, trials, gross sin, if you will, has caused them to forget that vow they made. In our scripture today, we see it was now some 30 years later Jacob's family was a mess. Dysfunctional family, if you will. He needed God. In verse 1 of our text, we read there, God said to Jacob, Arise, go to Bethel and dwell there. Make an altar there to the God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So what's so special about Bethel? Well, Bethel is a place of acquaintance. A place of acquaintance. This is the place where Jacob met God. Now you may think, well, he was raised uh, by Isaac and Rebekah and, and they feared God. They were God-fearing people. Yes, but they can't save anybody. Just because you have a mom and dad maybe that, that were devout Christians don't mean you are. And that's the way Jacob found himself at this point. A lot of people today know less about God right now than they did the day they got saved. You say, wait a minute, that don't sound right. Why would you say that? Okay, look, look at it. Look at this. Second Peter 1 and 9 says, For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. In other words, we can forget 
good things. The cleansing that God did within us. And move farther away instead of closer as time goes on. Forgotten their Bethel experience, if you will. Had forgotten their Bethel experience. Now Jacob had met God during a time of trouble in his life. He was fearful. He was basically running for his life at this point. Many of us today need to go back to the place where we first met the Lord. Many of us need to go back. Our Bethel, if you will. Bethel is the place where you can go back and find power and purity and peace. It's the place where you can go back and fall in love with the Lord all over again. Oh, how wonderful. Secondly, Bethel is a place of affirmation. Can you recall all the times that you've promised God that if we just help you, that you would do this or, or you would do that, or that you would never do whatever again? Be honest with yourself. Remember the vow you took the night you were saved or the day you were saved. And you promised the Lord that if He would save you, then you would live for Him. And you remember that vow? Have you carried that vow now? Jacob was reminded of that vow that he made way back in Genesis 28 there. Verses 20 through 22, it says, And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread and raiment to put on, so that I may come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God, and this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Jacob's vow. We need to go back to affirm our grace. Not to question our salvation, no. But to affirm the grace of God in our life. We need to go back to affirm our goal. What is our goal? Why did we get saved? What event in our, in our life helped us, or helped bring us, I should say, to salvation? What happened? What event? We need to go back to affirm our God. To, to think a lot of times people forget. They forget that God is who He says He is. Thirdly, Bethel was a place of altars. In verse 1 again, God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there, make an altar there to the God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. Jacob had gotten away from Bethel. And he had settled down amongst, if you will, the heathen people in the area. And now he was reaping the dividends of that. In Genesis 34 and 2, it says, And when Shechem, the son of Hamar the Habite, the prince of the land, saw her, he seized her and lay with her and humiliated her. Jacob's daughter, Dinah. I said earlier, this family was in a mess, dysfunctional. And here we see Jacob's daughter, Dinah. She'd gone out, the scripture says, to see the daughters of the land. That doesn't sound like anything wrong at all, except she was now mingling with the world. She was becoming part of the world. Shechem saw her. And the scripture tells us he eventually defiled her. Now there's a belief that she was taken by her will. And that may be so. However, the word defiled does not mean that. It simply means to pollute or to make dirty. There are many, many people today who are defiling themselves. Polluting, making dirty, if you will. And if you read on in Genesis 34, and I'm just going to kind of give you a little story here. Here's what had happened 
The sons of Jacob became absolutely livid, if you will, over the incident. Hamar proposed a solution. He said, let's let them marry. Intermarry between the Israelites and the Canaanites, which God had forbidden to begin with. But he said, let's let them intermarry. And we'll have full rights. The Israelites will have full rights here in the land. Well, the sons of Jacob had no intentions of letting Dinah marry. But they lied. And agreed to it if the Canaanites would go through the rite of circumcision. And they agreed. You know, Jacob... <laughs> Treachery. We see the same thing with his, his offsprings here. While all the men were recovering, the sons there of Jacob slew them and took Dinah from their house. And in Genesis 35 and 2, we see there it says, So Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you, and purify yourselves and change your garments. Folks, coming back to our spiritual Bethel requires two things. The first is repentance. Jacob told him, put away your strange gods. Repent, in other words. Secondly is rededication. Be clean. Change your garments, he said. Fourthly, Bethel was a place of assurance. God reappeared to Jacob. The scripture tells us Jacob returned there in Genesis 35 and 7. And there he built an altar and called the place El Bethel. Because there God had revealed himself to him when he fled from his brother. God again. God again. Revealed himself to him. While he was there. He was back at the place where he first met God. Folks, that's where we need to be more than we are. We need to get back to the place where we first met God. When God saved us, we need to be there. God was faithful. In Genesis 35 and 9, he says, God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padanaram, or Padanaram, excuse me, and blessed him. God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padaram and blessed him. Jacob returned to the place he met God. And when he did, he was blessed. <coughs> Excuse me. You can go on and read farther there in Genesis 35 and reading on. And you'll see just how God worked in Jacob's life. How he eventually, as Esau came to him, they met in peace. Why? Because Jacob was honoring his vow that he took. The promise he had made to God. Have we kept our promises to God? Maybe we need to return to the place we first met God. As we listen to our closing song this morning. If, if we need to return to that place, which I think most of us do at some point, we need to return to that place we met God. Now's a good time to do it. Lift your hearts up to Him. He'll meet you right where you are. We don't have to go to Bethel. We just need to go to God. So as we listen to our song, speak to the Lord.
stillness I know that you are God in the secret of your presence I know there I am Crucified to set me free. 
Thank you again for being with us this morning. I trust that something that's been said has touched you today. As we think about returning to that place where we met God, you might say, well, uh, you know, it was, it was in this church or that church or it was by my bedside or it was in my car. It doesn't matter where it was. The important thing is returning to God, making Him that priority in our lives that maybe has slipped away. Maybe the vows that we have not kept, we need to renew those vows with God. Rededicate, repent. That's what it takes to get back to that place. So this morning as we have our closing prayer, my prayer is that all of you will, this week, that you will get back, return to that place where you first met God and reaffirm those vows and rededicate yourself to God's work. Let us pray. Merciful God, thank you again for your blessings upon us. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to Again, look into your precious word. And Father, we thank you for your promise to us that you'll always be with us. You'll never leave us nor forsake us, Father. Help us to be the same way back to you. But Lord, that we would not forsake you or leave you. That we will go back and, and reaffirm ourselves and our vows and rededicate ourselves to you. Father, dismiss us now with your love, your grace, and your mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen and amen.